Um, so welcome to uh, a brief presentation, and then we'll have questions and answers later on funding your PhD. As I said at the outset, my name is Donald Leach. I am the Dean of Graduate Studies, uh, so therefore responsible for policies around all graduate students in NUI Galway. Uh, students are allocated to colleges and programs, so they're not my responsibility per se in terms of how they're managed through the process, but we help set policy and advice. Um, so I'm providing advice here. Uh, and the top title of the advice is funding your PhD. Um, so uh, let me try to get this working. And, uh, uh, I'm going to try and, uh, here we go. So um, first of all, a little bit about NUI Galway. So you're in a, a, a topic on NUI Galway research. So you should know a little bit about what kind of research we do. The good news is that we are um, a comprehensive research-led university. So university is about education and research. We do what we call research-led and research-driven education. So if we don't do research, we're not a research-driven or research-led university. We are comprehensive. That is that we cover most research disciplines, topics, departments, spanning all the way from arts to medicine with science, engineering, and business, law, public policy in between. There are some things we don't do, but I won't focus on them. So I'll focus on the things we do. We, do. we have significant, um, I think, expertise across all of these areas, and we have... Uh, scaled expertise uh, and distinctiveness in uh, our culture, research on our culture, our creative research, uh, medical devices and technologies, uh, our marine environment, marine ecology, uh, and in business, and uh, across all of these focusing on innovation. So that's what this slide helps to present. Um, so the question you're, I'm here to answer, well, part of it is, um, who will support you in doing a PhD in terms of funding? I'm not going to answer the first question is, so you want to do a PhD. Um, all I will say is that a PhD is the highest level of our degrees that we were award. award. So they are for high achieving dynamic individuals who are excited by and interested in a particular research topic and looking to undertake that research program, developing their independence to become a, a doctor, a doctor of philosophy in X, or a medical doctor uh, with MD and PhDs in X, where X is the topic you're interested in. It um, can be a long period, uh, four years full-time, six years part-time. It can be difficult, but hopefully interesting and rewarding. Um, so you should be prepared to engage in a long uh, marathon, not a sprint, uh, on an a, deep dive into a particular topic, recognizing the breadth of uh, how it um, touches others and its impact in knowledge generation, knowledge translation maybe, and on society and the economy, okay? So that's the first thing, that's up to you to decide. The second thing then is who will support you in this research? So the answer to the question that was asked at the start is how will you find this? The first thing you should look to find is a supervisor. And Valerie, who's our postgraduate uh, research marketing and recruitment officer, has indicated that the key website we use to help you do this is down, will be running soon. Okay, we had a cyber attack that's taken it out of circulation for a while. So I've a snapshot here. Here is the link to it uh, forward slash find a supervisor forward slash. It is uh, a portal where we have listed all of our research investigators with their names, their interests aligned to themes and sub-themes that is searchable. So the beauty of this is that as all of our potential supervisors of PhD projects, um, where they self-identify what their research interests are under themes and sub-themes for you to search by name, by theme, by subject area, etc. cetera. So, uh, Florence always comes up first alphabetically. Florence is a, a, an academic in the School of Chemical and Biological Sciences in microbiology, looking at things like uh, antimicrobial resistance, for example. Um, but you can search, and if you do, you will find things like uh, searching under an example of here is health economics, where Dr. John Cullinan comes up and a list of others. 
who undertake and supervise research in the area of econometric and spatial modeling techniques. So you can be as specific as you like in the search to find a potential supervisor. Okay, so that's the first thing to do if you're interested in doing research with us. Who will mentor you, advocate for, and help you progress through a long marathon program to do a doctoral degree with us? Okay. So I put this in in the interim while the other site is down. You may be able to search in the interim by searching across each college or school as an alternative to find a supervisor. They are not searchable, though. Okay, so if you look on each school and explore the staff or the people rubric, you'll find listings of staff, academic and otherwise, affiliated to schools and colleges across the university. Okay, so that's an alternative way of searching. Um, of course, so I'll go back here. Of course, you can use your own mechanism to search. So you can look for NUI Galway through LinkedIn, through Google, through Google Scholar, or through publications that we publish under NUI Galway through portals that help you search for these publications, such as Web of Knowledge or other types of portals accessible through our library, if you're a registered student with us currently, finding people who publish in your area. So it's always a good indicator of who will do research on a particular topic with you, what have they published in that topic in the last few years. Okay, so that's the third way of finding. Just use your normal search engines or search procedures through whatever um, company you're sending all your data to and using it to market things to you of who you want to find to work with. Okay, so find somebody you would like to work with for the doctoral degree. That's the first task. Okay, so what I've put in here is um, various routes then of how you could fund your doctoral degree, your PhD. The first and probably the least palatable economically to anyone is if you are really curious in and want to generate uh, research in a particular area that's of interest to you, you can fund yourself. Okay, so these are what we call self-funded, where you pay all of your fees and all of your living costs yourself. This can be expensive, but I think I'm convinced it's good value when you look at actually the costs are for the fee, but it can be expensive on an individual. Okay, good value, but expensive. It is probably the last resort, although we have quite a proportion of our students who self-fund because it's valuable to them and a value to them. A second approach is that you're, if you're in employment, you might want to consider whether your employer will fund the costs or partial costs, for example, the fee, because they may get a benefit from, from the PhD for you to go on a PhD. Most of our employment-based PhD students take up part-time PhD study, uh, six years equivalent to four years or up to six years, and employers pay for that. There are some, scheme, some schemes, I'll come to the end, where you can undertake a funded PhD while in full-time employment, um, full-time PhD, full-time employment. So your actual job is your PhD, okay? Uh, most of employment-based funding of PhDs, it is a part-time equivalent that's done aligned to their employment. So they're two, I would say, uh, marginal. So they're not the bulk of what our PhD students are funded through. So that is self-funded. You do it all off your own bat. Or an employer undertakes to fund it partially or fully for you. Um, the most uh, frequent arrangement is that our PhD students are funded through what are called scholarships. So this is someone else paying for you, your fees, and... In some cases, they're not all making a contribution to your living costs. So we have to be careful with language. It's a contribution to your living costs. It's not employment. So it's a scholarship, uh, and we call it a stipend. And tax revenue here in Ireland permits us to allocate this to you tax exempt. Okay, so that's why it's called a scholarship. And this is only for those under full-time instruction. So a full-time PhD can avail of a stipend and a scholarship that can cover your fees and payment to you of uh, contribution to your living costs. So then the next question is, well, well geez, who would do that? It sounds like a great deal, right? Who would do that? Um, the first scheme I'll point you to actually is us as a university, recognizing that we get a huge benefit from and great engagement from our researchers. 
we like to do research. We want researchers to come and undertake research with us. Otherwise, it's difficult for us as academics and supervisors alone to do all of the research. So we need some hands and brains, preferably both. Right? Um, so we need researchers, and we're willing to fund some of these from our own income. Right? So that scheme is called the Hardiman PhD Scholarship Scheme. Uh, it doesn't exist in any other university that I'm aware of to date to date in terms of a university-led scholarship scheme. Uh, some of the other universities have college-led or department-led or donor-led scholarship schemes. So we started this 10 years ago. We're in the 10th year and 10th anniversary of our Hardiman Scholarship Scheme, uh, named after our first librarian and a, a research scholar of the time back in the 19th century, James Hardiman. And our, our library is actually called after him as well, okay? So I've given you the link to the website there. It's not operational as yet in that our call has not been launched, but it is imminent. So the Hardiman call will be launched usually in early December. It's only a few weeks away. And what we will undertake to do is we will um, advertise widely. We will assess all applications with a supervisor. And I'll talk to you a bit about it in a second for funding of your PhD that we don't charge fees on and we will pay you your living costs of 18,500 per annum over the four years or equivalent in terms of if you have to take time out while you're doing your full-time PhD degree, which you have a process for, okay? So that's the first mechanism and it's the one that's most imminent. Um, if you're interested, have a look at it when it launches. The closing date is not until February, so you have time. It is for 2022 start. So just so you're aware, all of the funding opportunities are probably aimed at this stage for next year, 2022 start, not any time sooner. You may be lucky to find funding sooner, okay? So four years funding for living costs, marginal living costs and fees waived. The application requires a personal research statement, a curriculum vitae and a supervisor. So remember stage one, find a supervisor. They will have to agree to support you during your research um, program. Okay. You will also need referees. Right? So just so you know, here's a couple of examples of Hardiman scholars from either the most recent past or a distant past uh, that we have funded to date. We funded over 100 Hardiman scholars over the last decade. Okay. Closer to 200 actually. So this is Cameron Kieran. Cameron uh, is a current PhD student awarded a Hardiman scholar two years ago, but actually took time out from his Hardiman scholarship to become a student union officer for a period. So he was a postgraduate uh, student rep for, a, actually no, he was an education officer, I think for a period and started his PhD last year. Um, so uh, I'm interested in the area of health uh, and pharmacology. He's working with one of our supervisors in pharmacology and therapeutics. Uh, this is the a second one. So this is a, a Carolina. Carolina is also a recent Hardiman awardee in medicine, nursing, and health sciences in anatomy. And lastly, this is a more experienced from longer back um, awardee. Actually, funnily enough, this is in medicine as well. I must find a better diversity of awardees to show the next cohort. This is Atif. Uh, and Atif, I, I, I like putting up because Atif, as was Carolina, but Atif was a, an, an international PhD student. And there are always issues with how international uh, researchers and students engage with us. Uh, understand our culture and our society, never mind understand how we do research. And I think um, his testimonial here is, I, I think, good for us to tell others that he found the experience um, pleasant and he's still in Galway. So again, a victim of the, the Galway attraction, he's still with us. Um, so the Hardiman Scholarship process requires you to tell us a bit about yourself, as will any engagement with a supervisor, potential supervisor. If I put this up here as an example of how you could engage with finding a supervisor to support you during your research. So tell them about yourself, what qualifies you academically to undertake the research in question. Um, you may get a conditional offer, what we call a conditional offer, conditional upon achievement of a particular academic um, uh, outcome if you're still on an academic program, for example, so contingent upon achievement of a 2-1 undergraduate degree or a master's qualification for um, 
the formal offer to be made, maybe an example, okay? You should provide details of your research experience. Again, this is for the hardy one, but for any engagement with a potential supervisor. What experience do you have that puts you in a position to be ready to undertake the research? So what kind of background research have you done? What kind of research have you done already on this or on an aligned topic? What skills do you have already? And do you have already some results in an area you're interested in, not forgetting that the supervisor themselves has their own interests. So if you're approaching a supervisor saying, I'm really interested in COVID-19 and its impact on uh, society during the last 18 months, and you approach a supervisor in an area and they say, well, that's great, but I'm not. So how do you work with me or work for me or work together collaboratively if you're interested in an area, but I'm more interested in um, HIV and its impact on the health economics, for example, and want to remain interested in that area and don't wish to shift to COVID-19 for whatever reason. As an example, okay, so make sure that your interests align even before you propose your own ideas. So talk to the supervisor, engage with the supervisor. That will help inform then your personal research statement. So this in the Hardyman Scholarship and other scholarship schemes is the most important aspect of what will you tackle? How will you tackle it? What methods will you use? How realistic is the plan to achieve a PhD? And how does this relate to other research? So is it novel? A PhD is awarded for novel research, new research, new knowledge generated, not restating what is already known about the wheel, for example. So you need to have a novel approach or a novel method tackling an existing problem. Okay, so what's the problem or what's the new approach to the problem that you're looking to solve? You should then articulate why you're motivated to do a PhD, because if you're not motivated, you will not achieve a PhD and a supervisor will not support you. So why are you interested in a PhD? Okay. And how suitable are you to the particular program? Again, going back to the background, qualifications, experience, or enthusiasm, or all of the above. Okay. Best completed with the supervisor. So again, going back to step one, find a supervisor. You should also find advocates who advocate for you. So not just a supervisor, but those who say how good you are. Right? So find referees who will say to the supervisor and our application system, because our admission system requires referees as well, and or the funder, or all three, how good you are. So pick these carefully. They need to know you, your work, and how good you are. No point picking somebody who you know and is brilliant, but thinks you're not good. No point picking somebody who you know and is brilliant, but doesn't know you. Right? Pick somebody who knows your skills, your enthusiasm, your motivation, and your experience. And let them know about this and remind them of it, even sending them your personal statement, so that they can put in the best reference for you possible. Okay? Make sure you find these people and alert them to this in good time. All right. So... The upshot of all this is, so again, you may ask, how much does it cost? So here's a ballpark estimate, right? So the stipend, 18,500, and the fees, and I've used the non-EU fees because they're a better indicator of the true cost and not the EU fees, because once you pay EU fees, government cross-subsidize a bit for you, okay? So the cost about of you doing a PhD to society is about 133,000 euro, or a little bit more than that, actually. Okay. I haven't put in direct research costs. In there. Usually a funder will fund something like consumables and cost of a laptop as well. Okay, But the Hardyman Scholarship will fund this for you. So you need to convince us as a university or whatever other funder you're going to approach that this is worth their while. Maybe worth your while, but otherwise what? pay for it yourself. Okay? Be self-funded. Okay? Um, so the deadline for the Hardyman, so this is the first process we're talking about, is usually mid-February. So you have some time, think about it, approach a supervisor, maybe wait until the call is launched or even approach some supervisor now saying, I'm thinking of applying for a PhD. I know the Hardyman scheme will be open soon. Would you be interested in talking to me about supervising me on a research degree? Okay, so there's the web link. Uh, the email address is hrscholar at NUI Galway for any questions, queries about the process and the scheme, don't ask now because we haven't put somebody to work on this until the call is announced, okay? So we won't answer for now, we will answer once the call is announced. 
So that's the first and the main internal funding offered through NUI Galway for scholars looking to do a PhD. We fund about 20 a year, so there's not a huge number. We get about 160, 170 applicants per year, so success rate is less than 10%, okay? But it is a good scheme, okay? The next I will talk to you about is briefly, just to go through some others, and then I'll stop. So the other scheme, so who else would think, who would be crazy enough to fund you through a PhD? So besides our internal funding of the Hardiman, some of the colleges, schools, or even departments will fund scholars themselves, the equivalent of up to 18,500 stipend and fees waived. Okay? These are called college scholarships and or school scholarships. And these are advertised from time to time, and they're usually later than the Hardiman, they usually come in the springtime on the college web pages. And we may even get, Valerie is here, I think still, or she's not, we may even get a central system to advertise these opportunities, okay? So keep an eye on the college pages or your supervisor or potential supervisor will know about this. So you're better off linking with the potential supervisor say, well, what about college scholarships? What about school scholarships, okay? That's the second, again, internal funding. Um, and the, the last is, uh, so actually that's postgraduate programs. So two links there. The last is then others besides NUI Galway. So they're only small. So there are lots of other funding opportunities around the challenges, how to find them. That's what funding the asset to start, how to find them. So here's a few. Um, the biggest funder of PhD students nationally by the government is an agency called the Irish Research Council. And that funds, um, I think we had 29 awardees across the university for the IRC Government of Ireland Postgraduate Scholarship just announced, right? Unfortunately, they try to do things very early in the cycle. So their deadline for the Government of Ireland Postgraduate Scheme for entry next September has already passed. Okay, so hopefully some of you may have applied for that. If not too late for that for 2022, you are now targeting Governor of Ireland Postgraduate Scholarships for 2023 start, if you're going to target that. They do operate two other smaller schemes. So I mentioned this about employment-based and enterprise-based uh, scholarships. So these are where an industry partner or your employer right, will fund or co-fund a scholarship for you. So look them up, they're at research.ie. They're closing on December 2nd, so a couple of weeks. So if you're interested in and know of, or have a supervisor who knows of enterprise or an employment who will co-fund or fund you. So they're both different. One is co-funded uh, in the university and the other is on the job in employment with the partner. Okay, so look them up. Um, what else? So there are a range of other schemes run by national funders on targeted mission areas like agriculture and food. So Chagusk, our agriculture and food research agency, fund what are called Walsh scholarships every year. And there's a call for those. So look up the Chagusk website. The Irish Cancer Society links with the Health Research Board and funds cancer scholarships. And the HRB funds PhD scholarships, not many, themselves as well. OK, the HRB funds doctoral training networks. So there may be calls under doctoral training networks that the HRB has funded. And I think last in these, but there may well be others, uh, the EPA actually as well, the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, co-funds with the Irish Research Council as part of the Government of Ireland Postgraduate Scheme scholarships. OK, so the last one is the Marine Institute. Marine Institute funds what are called Cullen scholarships. Again, four years. Actually, I think there were three. They may be moving to four years funding for research on marine research. Usually in the Marine Institute, laboratories linked with a third level institute. And we have quite a number of our academic staff here in NUI Galway that link within this proximity with the Ormore Rinville um, uh, Marine Research Institute for doing research there, but through our programs. Okay. So there's some other schemes. Lastly, so there are other schemes that fund mostly the academic staff, so the research supervisors, and then the supervisors use that to advertise availability of scholarships to, to you as potential students. So opportunities for funding come through a large scale funding through things like Science Foundation Ireland. So Science Foundation Ireland funds what are called training centers for doctoral students. 
So these are called the Centers for Research Training. So there's about a dozen of them funded uh, that have an intake every year. We have one, particularly one in, in genomics research training, training led to NUI Galway, but there are others, so look them up. And it was also funded centers for doctoral training with the UK-based uh, um, research councils. Okay, so these are co-funded, but they are cohort-based entry. So there will be a call for these and advertisement, and then you would apply and, and enter. These are all um, collaborative research centers across some of the Irish institutions, and then with some of our UK equivalents. Okay, the best way to finding these is to ask the potential supervisors or look up who is involved in these research centers and see if there's a call out, okay? Um, and that's the, the last part of it is ask potential supervisors if they have other funding. So supervisors may have other funding with which they can use to fund your fees and or your stipend and of course the research costs for doing research with them, okay? Um, so then more general, how do you find opportunities generally that we may advertise? I'm trying to get again, as I said, a collective for advertising all of the opportunities on um, particular web page, page across the university because we haven't done this systematically. So in the absence of that, there is a European wide uh, website for advertising um, opportunities for scholars and for jobs. Okay, so academic jobs and scholars, it's called Your Access. So the link is here, EU wide opportunities advertise at your access okay and then there are commercial partners who advertise so there's nature jobs there's findaphd.com and their equivalents where our colleagues may advertise on these sites so we advertise the hardyman scholarship scheme for example on findaphd.com okay it's a uk-based advertising company that charges it for it but uh, it, it's good in terms of connecting with potential research uh, students and the last link I'll show you is that you may also, depending on your economic circumstances, be entitled to get, because they're back again, they were closed down when we hit the crash a decade ago, you may be entitled to a, what's called a SUSE grant, so a student grant that will pay fees on your behalf and perhaps even give you some maintenance, a small amount of maintenance, if you're particularly self-funded, okay? Try out the eligibility reckoner. So it does fund our um, grants for PhD and doctoral students. It uh, didn't for a period. And then if you're interested in why there's tax relief based upon scholarships, this is uh, the details provided there. For you. Okay, so uh, getting back to the conclusion, the core component of a program is a deep dive into uh, a research topic that you're generating original research, that you're going to become an independent researcher, if not already by the time you're finished your PhD, it's an individual journey uh, and that's good and bad. And that means that it's up to you to try to find who you would go on this journey with. You can start at any time in NUI Galway. So the flexibility of you starting at any time and we don't require you to have funding to do it. If you want to self fund, go ahead and do it. But it's a tough uh, journey if you're going to fund it yourself, okay? We offer what's called a structured PhD, and that means that besides or aligned to the research that you're going to undertake, which is the major component, we also structure some learning opportunities for you that we capture as modules, so courses or modules, short course or modules. So just as a guide, less than 10% of your credit will be for these modules. So we ask you under a structured PhD to complete 30 credits of training uh, on specific skills, generic skills or transferable skills that's captured as part of a module. So if you're interested in that, I can talk to you all day about it, but um, I think get onto the program first, then you can see what modules are of interest to you to take while you're on the program. Okay, so that's it done. I'm going to stop uh, the recording.